While the story is still developing, uh, apparently a man with both a sword and an ax was detained in the New York Times lobby. He specifically asked to speak with political reporters, although uh, there's no indication in this preliminary reporting indicating that he was looking for left wing or right wing political reporters, just political reporters. Authorities have not identified the individual, but I do want to read from a local news report, WNYW, which says that a man with an ax and a sword went into the lobby of the New York Times building on Thursday and asked to speak to the political section, authorities said. Then handed over his weapons and waited for emergency personnel when he was denied entry. The New York Police Department said officers responded to the Times' building in Midtown shortly after noon after getting a 911 call about a man with a knife. I think the biggest issue with this story is that the NYPD was called at all. It would have been far better if you know everyone fended for themselves and the NYPD did nothing. That's the left wing perspective on the story, right? Yeah, okay, so uh, Anna's being sarcastic, and I'm gonna explain yeah. why in a second. Um, so um, we live in dangerous times, and we live in dangerous times for two reasons. Uh, so when for Paul Pelosi uh, got attacked, the right wing said, "Oh, it's just crime, and it's not political. That's not true, it was political. Uh, and the left wing said, it's not crime, it's just political. Well, no, by definition, it was crime. So both answers are correct. Uh, in this case, um, it's a guy with an ax and a sword, so it's obviously very dangerous. And he's asking to speak to the reporters, so obviously he's got some sort of editorial issue with them. Does that mean it's he's an intellectual with an ax and a sword? No, I'm sure that he has got significant mental health issues, but that's the thing. So when we on the left, for example, criticize politicians and the media, yes, like the New York Times, we always say, don't ever do anything physical. Uh, if you do anything physical, that means you've lost the battle of ideas and you're surrendering, right? The right wing does not say that. The right wing uh, keeps saying, hey, you should use your Second Amendment rights, and they're trying to replace you and agitate you in a thousand different ways, right? So that's the political end of it. Now, to what Anna is saying, on the crime side of it, well, a lot of people, including people at the New York Times, uh, you know, were poo pooing the idea that that crime was rising in New York and other uh, cities across the country. And so regular citizens would say and are saying all the time, you guys don't get it. People are doing these things that are criminal, physical against us. When we call the cops, they don't show up or they release the guy right away. And then they come back and do the same things to us and to our community. And a lot of people, yes, including on the left or mainly on the left, to be honest, say, no, it's you're imagining it. We're yeah. not imagining it, okay? And here it is. Well, are we imagining this? And now that it affects the elites, of course, everybody will be outraged. But when it affects somebody at Supercuts, they're not as outraged. I'll tell you that story in a minute. Yeah, so, but the, that's the thing that's so incredibly frustrating about this because the proponents for, you know, so called depolicing and all of that. When stories like this come up, I've noticed that they're outraged at the political violence and how it needs to be taken so much more seriously and that there needs to be consequences for it. It's interesting, like the rhetoric changes and it's very, very notable. So when it comes to the elite, when it comes to mainstream media figures, when it comes to politicians, when it comes to anyone that has even a little bit of power, it is unacceptable that this is happening and we need to do something about it. There needs to be consequences. When it comes to I don't know, let's say the 25 year old woman and the nine year old boy who were minding their own business and shopping at Target this week in downtown Los Angeles. When a guy randomly comes up to them and stabs them, God forbid I draw any attention to that story because it's sensationalism, right? I'm sensationalizing and I'm pretending like there's a crime wave when really the crime wave doesn't exist at all and everyone is safe, everyone is happy, everything is good, right? So am I sensationalizing political violence by drawing attention to this particular story if it does turn out to be a politically motivated attack? Um, It's an anecdote, right? So should I be focusing on anecdotes? I don't know, you tell me, Cenk. Am I the good guy, the bad guy? I I, I, I can't tell anymore because I would like everyone to be safe, okay? I don't want anyone to be targeted in a violent fashion because of their political beliefs. And I also don't want a nine year old boy at Target to be randomly stabbed 
by some guy uh, who obviously was having mental health issues of his own. But nonetheless, whether there are or are not mental health issues, the public deserves to be safe and that includes everyone, not just the elite. Look, it's a fact that when the New York Times is confronted with this kind of potential crime, well, it's a crime to begin with to walk in with those weapons. He did lay the weapons down. But am I concerned for the people who work at the New York Times? Of course I am, it's terrible, I don't want that to happen. It's awful in every way, right? Um, and that's fair, but no one says, "Oh, that's so sensationalizing the crime issue." When you talk about a guy bringing in an axe and a sword to the New York Times, everybody thinks, "Oh, that's a giant news story, giant news story." So I went to Supercuts the other day here in LA, and the windows busted, and the windows busted for the ice cream shop next door. And I asked, "Hey, what's going on?" And my hairdresser was like, "Well, people every once in a while just come in and take whatever they want." And in the beginning, we tried to stop them, and then we realized that was futile. And then we started calling the cops, and the cops never come. Uh, and so we stopped calling the cops. And then they started throwing bricks through our window. And we keep fixing it, but the ice cream folks, they gave up. They just leaving the uh, the, the, play, the glass uh, you know, broken, and they just boarded it up, etc. Because it just happens all the time. So I'm like, so you guys come into work every day and know that somebody can walk in, terrorize you guys, and there's no one here to protect you. She's like, yeah, that's exactly right. And that happens to working class people every single day in LA, New York, and other places. And the reaction to that generally is, oh, who cares? We want freedom for the other guys, but not for the, uh, that lady working at Supercuts. But when it happens to the New York Times, you will see it with your own eyes, national news everywhere. We're just noting that, that's all. Yeah, and I just want to note uh, to the people who think I don't do my due diligence and I don't read and I just spout out without providing receipts, even though I've provided receipts a billion times. Uh, I have read Angela Davis's book, in fact, and uh, it still leaves me asking, what exactly would happen in a society that abolishes prisons? What would public safety look like? And there are no straight answers about it. So look, people think I'm being condescending. But it's super condescending to tell me, why don't you just read a book about it? Yeah, I have actually. So answer my questions, what would happen in this, in this specific situation? You abolish cops, you abolish police. What do you do with this guy who showed up with a sword and an ax? What do you do with him? I just wanna know, answer that question. And if you give me a straight answer, I'll at least know, all right, they've thought this through, they have an answer, it makes sense. But so far, no one, including people we have invited on this show, have given us a straight answer. Now, that does not mean that I'm not, I'm against reforming prisons, I'm against reforming uh, policing. That is something that I've been a proponent of for a long time, and I have not changed my stance on it. And so, this made up binary of, well, either uh, we abolish or, uh, you know, you're either in favor of abolishing or you're in favor of the system that we have in place right now. No, I don't accept that binary. I think that's BS. And I want a system that actually works to keep people safe while simultaneously rehabilitating people. And guess what? I don't work for a nonprofit where my, my livelihood relies on grants to, to push this ideology, okay? I work in news, I look at data, I see what's happening in my own community, and I refuse to be gaslit by people who I typically agree with politically on this specific issue, okay? I, I just, again, give me some straight answers. And if you can't, then don't, don't come at me with your condescending tone about how I'm like some right winger now, because you know I don't wanna be stabbed in the head with gardening shears when I'm walking around in my neighborhood. And like, Anna, Anna, we waste our breath talking about prison abolitionists. That, that's, I mean, that's the most extreme of the extreme. And if you guys are gonna catch feelings, go ahead and catch them all, catch them all. Because catch I'm, all day, I'm never ever going to agree that a guy who goes and walks into a target and stabs a little kid in the back with a knife should be able to walk free and shouldn't go to prison. I don't agree. And if you want to say, oh yeah, that's copaganda. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course, they should be able to stab little kids in the back. That's called freedom. You sound like a right-wing lunatic. I said it. Go cry over it. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, Jr. So those are super fun. But you also get. Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So, all that 
All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.